Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Ghosts and Spirits video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll talk about another suggestion from you here. This one, one of the past suggestions from around last year or so. And then I'm going to give this a rest. going to probably talk about some other new videos soon, but give this a rest for at least a couple of weeks. This particular suggestion is quite fascinating in the sense that it's a spirit, but that's found throughout multiple parts of the world and each part of that world has its own specific version of the spirit so that was quite fascinating to read normally when you talk about any ghost or any spirit you'll pretty much only find them in one location but nope in this case it is found throughout multiple portions of this world and again each one has its own distinct version now there's still some similarities throughout all those parts of the world that transcend each other but yes at least in general I'm going to talk about one specific area because this seems to be the most popular one or the most popular version of this spirit and I'm talking about this what's called the Nixie a water spirit of sorts that's found throughout various parts of England Europe and other par and countries and other nations so let's go ahead and we'll talk about all that information here for you now this this goes by various names so it could be called the Nixie but it's also called the neck the Nikor the Nokin again it all depends on where you find this particular spirit so what is the Nixie well it's definitely a mythological spirit of some sort that has been around for a long long time one of the longest ones yet in fact you can go back to tales regarding to it back from the 1100s if you can believe that so we're talking Oh, a good number of years, almost a thousand years or so of existence. But yes, absolutely, there have been tales uh, written about this spirit, this water spirit of sorts, since that time period. And even to this day, because of its mythology, uh, people are still talking about it within those regions, associating it as something that truly, absolutely exists within the waters that it frequents. That's why it's called a water spirit, because the versions that come ac that people come across with, they all originate with the fact that either male or female, these spirits generate or come out from the waters within certain parts of the world. And again, you can go to Germany and you'll see see um, uh, some I guess aspects of the Nixie you can go to the uh, uh, Finland you can go to Sweden you can go to other parts of Europe and you will find various versions of this Nixie but for the most part again we'll focus on here on the German part and yes there is a male version and yes there is a female version and then there's also extremes with regards to what these creatures what these spirits can do for the most part they seem to be benevolent like they do not have anything bad regarding with their existence they just pretty much either live or cohabitate within those waters with humans but for the most part they don't seem to do anything bad and this is because they are visible it seems like by their very nature they can become invisible and that's how it's hard to discern whether you're in the presence of a Nixie or so but if you truly absolutely had to say that they had an original body of some sort it's interestingly enough that of either a mermaid or a merman again depending on which um, which type of spirit you come across male or female but for the most part they tend to be something that's involving like a spirit uh, something that's uh, invisible but even then they have the shape-shifting ability so as spirits they can become pretty much anything they want so if they wanted to become an animal if they wanted to become just an object of some sort they can absolutely do that but for whatever particular reason if they're not invisible they tend to take the most common shape of a mermaid or a merman and again they seem to just leave humans alone because they just live by themselves they live in their own group and whatnot but there is this fact though apparently there are some more malicious entities some malicious spirits and this is why it takes on more from the mythology for these past couple hundred years because these things whatever they are especially those that are more malicious seem to have the ability to try to uh, lure people into the water so they'll either take on again a very attractive body either let's say of a woman which seems like it's more easier because 
if you're in a place where you have water and you have men, I guess, that are off in battle or men that are going to work, whatever is the case, all it would take to lure men into the water is just become the body of an attractive woman. And a lot of the artwork that I was finding depicting these Nixies, it seems to be that that's the fact, that they take on the nude body of a beautiful woman and that's what makes it so easy for them to lure men into the water. They don't seem to have any other... Uh, I guess thrill other than the fact that they want to be able to drown people like they'll bring them into the water and then that's it they absolutely get drowned and then they'll move on to the next victim although there is the notion that sometimes these Nixies have to do it because I don't know exactly the uh, logic behind this but they have to have a sacrifice done once a year within one person within that area so don't know exactly again how that is like what exactly that deters or what that brings about but the whole idea is these Nixies need to have one human for sacrifice every single year so that's why they seem to have to lure these people but then there are other tales about these Nixies being more uh, good towards humans like they'll actually prevent humans from drowning like they'll whistle I guess if there's a fog of some sort and if someone is lost, then they'll whistle because they're known for being able to do like some enchanting songs of some sort, either with uh, an instrument that they might have or themselves singing, like in the case of the mermaids or the female version of the Nixies. And when that happens, then that helps create uh, a rescue scene of some sort, like it prevents these people from being lost and in some cases inadvertently falling into any water and then drowning themselves. Another interesting thing about about these Nixies is there's another way you can find out at least with regards to the more malicious ones who they are because again if they're shapeshifters they can take on the shape of anybody and sometimes that includes full body humans so rather than let's say mermaid merman half body half fish no in this case they can take on a full body of a human and they'll do so in normal clothing as well but there's a very easy way to discern it. Apparently, they'll have still, for whatever reason, even with, let's say, the ability to fully shapeshift, they can't do it 100% because you'll be able to see like a small... I guess slit within their ears and that is also that's supposed to te be the telltale sign that it's a Nixie or in the case of a female version she'll have on clothing but the bottom part of her clothing especially her skirt will still be for whatever reason forever wet so I don't know exactly again the reasoning behind that like why they can't make it uh, let's say 100% dry when it comes to their clothing but that's supposed to be telltale way to figure out that you're that you're dealing with a full-blown Nixon either uh, Nixie either a check out their ears and then if they have like a small slit somehow within their ears or if you're looking at a female Nixie make sure to look towards the bottom of her clothing because the dress or skirt that she has on towards the bottom will always have uh, be wet like in terms of it just being coming out of the water itself but yes at least that's some of the ways to ensure that when you come across these Nixies that yes you can do so uh, and, and discover them immediately that there's also again various versions of these Nixies and very popular ones too some of them even take on their own names as well for example in Sussex area there seems to be one by the name of Ginny Greenif T is one of the more bad ones though because she is known as a river hag and these are um, creatures along with another one named Peg Powler that specifically try to lure children or elderly people straight into the water. Their whole purpose is to pretty much drown them and then that's it. Um, Ginny Green Teeth is called Green Teeth because she tends to be green skinned, has long hair and is also has sharp teeth. So interesting the fact that if they can shapeshift into anything that they would that in this case these two would shapeshift into more evil ones like evil versions of appearances when they could easily I guess lure more victims if they were more pleasing to the eyes but otherwise no um, and then with regards to Peg Powler she actually just outright grabs people those that wander too close to the water's edge so much like let's say the um, alleg I'm sorry the crocodiles that jump out from the river right when the deer or the antelope are drinking from it just instantly like in a snap this is what Peg Powler does like she'll jump out 
grab the ankles of those who actually come too close to the water's edge, pull them in, and then that's under. And then uh, it shall move on to the next victim as well. But yes, that's all the information, at least all the stuff that stands out with regards to the Nixie. If anyone has any more info, anybody from those areas that has, uh, I guess, more uh, information tied to these tales, please post those comments below. That would be really, really good to hear. I'm just barely, in some cases, touching the surface of this too because the, again there's so many versions of where these Nixies come from there could be known as water lilies as well there's another version of it in Scandinavian called the Bacchus which is like a horse of some sort uh, the German versions I already described here as well but yes I get that's just barely touching the surface uh, with regard one thing I wanted to note too is that there's actually a statue also dedicated to a Nixie a very famous one too her name was Lorelia. Lorelia. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but she was someone that, according to legend, was in the 19th century famous for perching on a rock and then luring fishermen and others to those reefs. I guess she was one of the bad ones because her whole point was trying to lure them to the reefs and either drown them or make them drown themselves, all based on the uh, alluring sound of her voice. But if you go to that area, you can see the alleged rock which she uh, she supposedly sat on because there's a statue there commemorating her to this very day. You're looking at a picture of it there too. So quite fascinating, quite interesting. I love those parts of tales whenever I'm reading this information then I come across that at that very spot if you believe it that there was something like this something so crazy somebody uh, in this case a water spirit that actually sat in that rock so interesting stuff so alright everybody thanks again as always take care